Hello everyone, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart and in this lesson we're looking at Science Book 3, Lesson 13. Lesson 13 is about magnets. It's The title is Exploring Magnets. I'm sure you've had fun playing with magnets before. In this unit, we'll talk about what magnets attract and how we can use magnets. Okay, so let's get started. Of course, we always begin with a vocabulary section. Our first word is attract. Attract means for one object to cause another object to move towards it. Okay, attract. And that is, you know, we're talking about magnetism here, attraction, but attraction can also be between different people. If somebody, if you see somebody and they're very, uh, wow, you really like them, or you like their personality, you are attracted to that person. You want to move closer to that person. Don't get too close, but <laughs> okay, but you want to get closer to that person and be with that person, hang around with that person. Well, magnets do the same thing. Of course, they can't think, their attraction is just natural. Okay. Next, we have repel. Repel is the opposite of attract. So if attract means the two objects are moving closer to each other, repel means that they move away from each other. And repel is for one object to cause another object to move away from it. And attraction and repel are both types of forces, right? Attraction will, will, uh, will pull another thing towards it with a certain force. And repel, there is also some force that is acting on the two objects to separate them, to make them move away from each other. Opposite. Opposite means to be completely different, right? If I'm going north and you're going south, we are going in opposite directions, okay? So opposite is to be completely uh, uh, different from each other, to be completely different direction, completely different personality, a lot of different types of opposites. Magnetic. Okay, so now we get into some words more specific about the idea of this lesson. Magnetic means acting like a magnet or affected by a magnet. Magnetic is kind of like a quality, right? If you say um, this metal is magnetic, it means that it acts like a magnet. It has that, that those forces of attraction or repulsion. So magnetic. Non-magnetic means it doesn't act like a magnet. It's not affected by magnetic forces. It doesn't attract other things to it. It doesn't push them away from it. It's non-magnetic, okay? Magnetic field. Now, magnetic field is an area around a magnet where the magnet's power is felt. Now, this diagram kind of shows um, the magnetic field around this magnet. And you can see the field, it's a very difficult, it's a very complicated diagram, actually, if you take a look at the, um, the lines or somebody's artist's conception of what a magnetic field is. But you can kind of see it. Uh, this magnet is attracting little pieces of iron. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see how the iron is arranged. If you just sprinkle the iron, it will clump together like this. And it kind of shows the outlines of the magnetic field. A magnetic field is like... A field is like an invisible force around an object. You can't see it, but you can detect it using certain tools, right? And there's a magnetic field, there's an electrical field. There are different, these are diff two very common fields around natural objects. You can't see they're invisible, but they do have properties and we can measure them and they do exert some type of energy or force around them. And that's what a magnetic field is. So an area around a magnet where the magnet's power is felt. Now I'd like to also point out one more thing though. A magnetic field isn't very large. I mean, for huge objects it is, but for a magnet, um, you know, it doesn't take far, uh, a long distance to get out of the magnetic field to get away from the area that the magnet's power is. The power of a magnet, the area is very small, right? It's not very large. So you notice that you know if you have two magnets and you separate them, there's, not, there's nothing going on between them. But the closer you get, you have to get pretty close uh, for, the, for that magnetic field to show itself or to have some type of action. Okay, so interesting. Okay, those are our, our vocabulary words for this lesson. 
Let's talk about the two main ideas in this unit. The first idea is what magnets attract. So we talked about magnets, the magnetic field around a magnet. That field will either attract another object, a magnetic object, or it will repel another magnetic object. So what do magnetics attract? What do magnets attract? They attract other magnetic objects. So, what are other magnetic objects? What are examples of them? Well, paper clips is a good idea or a good example. If you have a magnet, you can go to your stationery store or a little, uh, maybe in a grocery store or school supply store. You can find lots of magnets, and if you buy a box of paper clips, you can have fun, you know, playing with the magnet and making the paper clips do some strange things <laughs> with the magnet. Okay, so magnetic objects like paper clips and screws. Screws. Don't say NASA, right? That is um, uh, uh, not correct. Screws. Okay, so a screw, of course, is this little、uh, piece of metal here. You use a screwdriver, a screwdriver, to put it into wood and you turn it. It's different from a nail. Although nails will also work. A nail, you use a hammer to put into the wood, and then once your nail is in the wood. You know, it, it's done. It's one use. Screws can be used again and again. Okay, but anyway, screws are made of metal. Paper clips are made of metal. Nails are made of metal. So usually, metal objects are magnetic. Magnetic objects are attracted to magnets. But what are some things that aren't attracted to magnets? These are what we call non-magnetic objects. And what are they? There are things like paper. Wood, actually, paper is a type of wood, right? Paper is made from wood, okay? And plastic, plastic is not magnetic. These things do not have metals inside of them, so metals are usually the things that are magnetic. So non-magnetic objects are not attracted to magnets. Okay. If you have a magnet, you try to attract wood, it won't work. If you try to attract a plastic toy with your magnet, Sorry, it's not going to work. Okay, so how do we use magnets? Magnets have this very interesting、uh, force around them. They can attract or repel other objects. We can find very interesting uses for magnets, and magnets are being used all around us every day. There's one very common、uh, use of a magnet. It's been in use for hundreds of years. It used to help people find the direction, find out which way to go. Okay, especially for people on a ship, right? If you're in the ocean, there's no landmarks. Sure, you might have stars, but what if it's cloudy? <gasps> you can't see the sky. What do you do at night? Where do you go? If you have a compass, it will tell you where to go. So a compass has a magnetic needle which always points north. So if you always know where north is, you know, okay, well we need we're not going north, but we're going east. But we know where north is, so we can figure out where east is. So even if you can't see the stars, there's no sun in the sky. It's a very cloudy day. You can still find your direction using a compass. Next, we have a crane, a magnetic crane. That's interesting. A magnet at the end of the crane. Now, this is a very powerful magnet, right? I said,、uh, and again, even though it's a very powerful magnet, it's not going to operate over long distances. So, if you if you're wearing a watch, don't worry about a magnetic crane. It's not you know, your arm's not going to fly up out of the air <laughs> and hit the crane. It has to be pretty close to the crane. So, anyway, a magnet at the end of the crane lifts heavy metal objects from the trash pile. So you have like a trash pile. The the main thing I think of is like an auto scrapyard where old automobiles, you know, people, you know, done with the automobile. The automobile is broken; it doesn't run anymore. They they、uh, put them in a scrapyard, and there's a crane with a metal on、uh, magnet on the top that'll come down, and the car will attach to the magnet, and then you can move the car over to probably a crusher or some machine that maybe.、Uh, Rips up the metal. Hopefully, they recycle that metal.、Um, but that's a magnetic crane. Of course, it can be used for a lot of different things, not just in a scrapyard. Also, in a refrigerator. Think about this. Now, don't do this too often because your mom will get mad. But <laughs> when you open the refrigerator door and you close it, you notice when, as soon as you the door closes, almost close, it's like a force kind of. Makes it close by itself, and it stays shut. Right? Why doesn't the refrigerator door ever just, you know, just come open by itself? 
It won't because there are magnets along the door and the frame of the refrigerator to keep it closed. And that's why when you close the refrigerator, you get almost closed and it seems like it shuts itself. Also, it's you don't open the refrigerator door very easily, right? You have to use some force to break that magnetic attraction between the magnets. Thankfully, refrigerator mag manufacturers don't put really strong magnets on the refrigerator or the freezer because you never be able to get the ice cream, right? So it, it ha can't be a very strong magnet, should be a weaker magnet so that you can open the refrigerator and the freezer part and get what you're getting, whether it's a cold drink or an ice cream bar. Okay, so magnets keep the refrigerator door closed and that's important because if the door just opened by itself, all that cold air would come out and your drinks wouldn't be cold anymore and your ice cream would all melt away. So that's no good. So we use magnets all around us every day. Okay, let's do the reading. And in the reading part, as usual, you can read along with me or read along in your mind, practice pronunciation and focus on the vocabulary that we learned in this lesson. You guys ready? Let's begin. A magnet is an object that has a strong magnetic field. Most magnets are made from nickel or iron. Nickel or iron are two types of metal. A magnet has two opposite poles. They are called the north and the south poles. Okay, not the N and the S poles, the north and the south poles. Okay. The magnetic field is the strongest at the poles. Magnets can attract or repel other magnets. If you put two magnets together, what will happen? If you put the same poles together, they repel each other. If you put opposite poles together, they attract each other. Magnets can attract magnetic objects. A paper clip is magnetic. If you point a magnet at a paper clip, the magnet attracts it. Magnets do not attract non-magnetic objects. Paper is non-magnetic. A magnetic field can go through objects, but it will be weakened. A magnet can still attract a paper clip through paper. And that's a good trick, right? If you have a magnet and you put a piece of paper on top of your magnet and then you put a paper clip on top of the piece of paper, you can move the paper clip around the piece of paper using the magnet underneath. Now, if you're inventive or creative about doing this, you can fool your friends by saying there's some magical force moving the paper clip around the paper. Of course, the more you know about science, the more you will be able to understand or realize that somebody who says something is magic, it's not true. It's, you know, everything has a natural or uh, scientific explanation. So the more you know about science, the more you will be able to explain things that you see in nature. So that's important. Okay, good. So what is the main idea of this reading passage? The main idea is that you have a main idea or a topic sentence and then you support that main idea or topic sentence with details. So you say something and then now you want to back it up or give examples. So what is the main idea of this reading passage? The main idea is a magnet is an object that has a strong magnetic field. Okay. And that's true. That's a, that's a good that's a good statement to make. And now you want to back that up by giving examples. What are examples of that? Well, the first one is objects like paper clips are beep, while paper is beep. Okay, so we talked about two types of things. That was the first main idea we went over in this uh, lesson. And we talked about things that are magnetic, like paper clips. Paper clips, remember, are made of metal, so they are magnet. Magnetic. Well, paper is non-magnetic. Magnetic. Paper doesn't have any metal, tin, iron, other types of metal in it, so it is not magnetic. It doesn't. It's not affected by the forces of magnetism. It is non-magnetic. So, what can magnets do? Magnets can beep magnetic objects. So we talked about these forces of the magnetic field, right? We talked, there are two main forces, attraction and 
repelling or repulsion, but the verb to attract, to repel. So magnets can, if, if you have a magnetic object next to a magnet, what happens? Do they, do they repel each other? No, they attract each other. So magnets can attract, oops, attract, there we go. Uh, magnets can attract magnetic objects, right? If you beep a magnet at a paper clip, the magnet will attract it. So what do you do? Remember, the magnet has a north and south pole, so you have to point the magnet in the right direction at the paper clip. So you point. If you point, whoops, there we go. If you point a magnet at a paper clip, the magnet will attract it. It will make it come towards it. That's kind of cool, really. It's almost, it's like magic, but it's not magic. Okay, it's <laughs> science. Okay, the same poles of two magnets will, okay, the same poles. If you have a south pole of one magnet and the south pole of another magnet, what happens if you push them together? It's all really hard, it's really, and this is a good experiment. Get two strong magnets and, and try to push them together and it's really hard and they, they won't stick together. They'll f if you let go, you stop applying force, they'll, they'll, they'll like fly apart. So. The same poles of two magnets will repel each other. Repel. And the beep poles of two magnets will attract each other. So we had the same poles. What's the, <laughs> what's the opposite of same? Well, the opposite of same is opposite. <laughs> we talked about that. That was one of our vocabulary. So the opposite poles, right? North, North Pole and South Pole are opposite poles. But if you push them together, right, they will attract each other. You don't have to push them very hard. They will, they will attract and stick together without much force, if you just move them close to each other. The, so we have same and the pandero, or I'm sorry, opposite, 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 whoops, there we go, opposite. So the opposite poles of two magnets will attract each other and they'll stick together. Okay, so that wraps up our lesson for today. Uh, it's interesting about magnets. Magnets are kind of cool to play with. You know, I know maybe you get bored of them after a little while, but they're kind of neat. It's also kind of neat to think about the magnetic force, not just around magnets, but you know, the earth is like a big magnet too. It's interesting to read more about magnetism and magnetic fields and how they work around us and especially the different applications that scientists and uh, people who work in technology have been able to to invent to make our lives easier. Easier, Of course, a very common example is the refrigerator door. That's a very easy one. But what other examples can you think of? There's magnets are in use all around us all the time, and they're very helpful to us. And it's very interesting to think about their, their forces, not just with magnetism, but then you also get into electricity as well. But anyway, that's a huge lesson. Anyway, I hope you uh, learned some good words in this lesson and kind of use this as maybe an introduction into magnetism and how magnets work. Okay, well, thanks for studying with me as always, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.